Hi again, everyone. Um, I decided I wanted to give a call to one of Mercedes' friends. Uh, you met Mercedes back in episode 102, uh, and she has a friend named Annie, who she said I had to speak to. Uh, she's currently also living in Argentina, but uh, is originally from Switzerland. So I wanted to give a call to someone who is pretty far from home uh, to see what they're going through in a country that is not uh, their home country. So let's give her a call. My name is Annie Dutois. I'm uh, an actress and I am currently in Buenos Aires, Argentina. What uh, type of acting do you do? I'm um, basically a stage actor, mostly. Uh, it's a pretty recent thing in my life, but this is uh, something different uh, to talk about. I'm here in Argentina because I was supposed to be in a play and uh, the premiere was supposed to be April 1st. So I was, you know, we had been rehearsing for about two and a half months, really, when we had to stop. Uh, so, you know, all the costumes are, are made, the stage design, everything is, I mean, we, we had like two weeks to go before the, the premiere. So basically now it's been suspended, but I mean, postponed because of the situation. We have no idea when theaters will open again. So they're thinking about doing streaming, you know, that's the idea. Now they're thinking about actually once the quarantine is a little less strict, maybe we could resume rehearsals and do a streaming version, you know, but everything is up in the air. Basically, we don't know. Yeah, I think it's very interesting how uh, businesses are taking to technology in order to, like, you know, make sure that things don't stop because it is very difficult, especially when you work in a field where you need people to be there. I mean, you have to have an audience or right. or, or <laughs> it's a beautiful play that no one gets to see. And so I think that that's very interesting that they're thinking going streaming. And I really think that's a, a great idea from your producers and directors. Yeah, let's hope it works. Uh, it's it's a real uh, crisis. I mean, I come from a performing artist family, you know, my parents are classical musicians and everything has been canceled. I mean, they have zero concerts in perspective for the next six months or something, you know, like, <clears throat> So everything is really, I think for, for performing artists, it's really rough. I also have, yeah. uh, you know, a, a visual artist, very dear friend who had to close her entire studio. Uh, and she relies wholly on, you know, being able to have the public come in and see her work and other artists work in her gallery. And so art all together is something that we have cultivated so well as a society. And we need to make sure during this, you know, COVID pandemic that we're, paying attention to those people that do give us that art. So thank you for saying that. I hope that after this, there's going to be such a demand for reality, you know, <laughs> that people will want to actually go back to, to the theater and to, uh, to see things live, you know, because we are actually now consuming a lot of art through the internet, which is fantastic. And thank God we have Netflix and all of these, you know, other possibilities. Otherwise, I think people will go nuts. Really, I really do. Uh, and I think the importance of art now is even more uh, obvious. Can you tell everyone where you are from originally and how you got into uh, this ability to travel the world, uh, where all you have been, where you're planning on going, and, uh, <laughs> and how COVID has possibly you know, put a damper on that? Originally, I'm from Switzerland. Uh, I, I grew up in, in Geneva. Um, but I come from a performing artist family, so always traveling quite a lot. I, I left Switzerland uh, to go to college in the U.S. I, I did my undergrad, uh, my graduate school there, a Ph.D. I, I was even a professor for a while um, at Arizona State University. Um, and I, I was uh, teaching uh, French literature, comparative and French literature. And then I, I, I sort of switched to the performing arts, you know, going back to my roots, <laughs> so bringing literature to the stage in a way, like sort of, it's not completely off, but it was more, um, you know, a desire of mine to be, you know, doing something that would have a broader impact probably. And how, well, how do I end up in Argentina? My mother's from Argentina 
And mais toi pas là parce que sorry my son is here. Um, my mother is from Argentina and um, so I, I I I wanted to spend some time here and I, I started you know connecting with with the local um, art scene and one thing led to the other and then I got uh, you know cast for this play um, and so that's why I'm here and I was supposed to be here for about six months. And my son, uh, you know, my, my family is very scattered. So one of my sons is in Spain. He's almost uh, 18 now. So my parents are in Switzerland, uh, also in quarantine. And I have a brother in Los Angeles who is in quarantine as well. Oh, wow. Self, you know, sort of self-isolation. And uh, my son, my youngest son, is uh, was going to school in Arizona, living with his dad while I'm here. And he came to see me for spring break and got stuck here. No so way. I'm actually, yes. So he's here with me, uh, you know, which I'm very, very happy about because I don't think I would actually be able to um, go through this without him. I, you know, it's it's a blessing. It was amazing because he arrived exactly at the right moment in a way, because had he arrived one week earlier, probably he would have gone back. And one week later, he wouldn't have been able to travel. They actually canceled all flights a few days after he arrived and we didn't know it was going to happen obviously and then they closed all the um the country off so basically he's here with me and doing school wow. <laughs> from zoom i mean like all his friends really so that doesn't change much but i'm really grateful that he's with me honestly yeah, <laughs> so. i am too i'm so glad i mean there are so many people around the world right now who don't have anyone with them while they're self-quarantined i'm personally like worried about those people I'm trying yeah. to make sure that I contact those people, but there's, it's totally different to talk to somebody via a computer and a screen yeah. than it is to be able to talk to them in, in real time and, and have them in your same space. And so I think it's such a, like you said, a blessing that he's there. And I'm very happy to hear that. So I rented this space uh, for the play, which was close to the theater, but it's a small studio. I mean, I wasn't supposed to be here for, <laughs> you know, quarantine. So, and my son is with me. So it's a very small, so basically a studio. So we're stuck, both of us in that small space, but you know, it's okay. We get along. <laughs> and I mean, the good thing for me is that because he has school every day, it sort of structures our day. And the strange, you know, I, I mean, I, I love, te I used to, to be a, a, t a professor myself. So anyway, I, I love teaching. So I'm basically homeschooling him while he, he has about two hours of school a day via Zoom, you know. So that gives us a structure. But the strange thing is because his school is in Arizona and we're in Argentina, we have to change our schedule. So basically we go to bed at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> totally strange schedule and we wake up at noon <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like my regular day schedule so that's hilarious Whatever. <laughs> what were your thoughts uh on covid19 uh when it first started when you first hearing the words coronavirus uh in argentina what did you think about it well you know i have i was aware of the coronavirus pretty early on because um i was actually supposed to go to china in in january which thank god i didn't for a different project uh, before coming to Argentina. And uh, my, my, you know, my parents also uh, had uh, concerts in Asia. So we knew from a very early point that this was a real problem because they started canceling everything in China. Uh, we're in contact with people there in Japan, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, there was the idea that this would not come here, you know. Uh, now, when it hit Europe, Argentina was still okay. Uh, then that's when people started becoming worried. This is my son. Yes, Hi. he can come in. Can Hi. he come in? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Raphael. Hi, yes, Raphael. It's down. so nice to meet you. I'm glad so... you're there for your mom. That's very nice. <laughs> Argentina has a lot of people uh, from Italy and Spain also, so a lot of people were coming back from these countries, and this is how the virus got in here, obviously. Uh, but they reacted very fast here. I was pretty impressed, I have to say, because, you know, they, they, there weren't that many cases, but they immediately implemented, um, first of all, they canceled all flights, they, they closed the borders, and then now the quarantine uh, the, the sort of, uh, was, you know, and they're pretty strict about it. It's not optional at all. And, the, and of course, our is dealing with other problems. I mean, this is a develop in a way they have a lot of poverty 
They have a lot of poverty here, a lot of people living in terrible conditions. They don't even have running water, you know. So they're dealing with very different problems in countries like Argentina than, let's say, in Europe or in the United States, uh, because, you know, they have to deal with people who really, if they don't work, they starve. And there's a whole social issue. So it's been very interesting to follow that here and to see how, you know, they're, they're doing a pretty good job, I have to say. Now, what is the, the news access like for you while you're here in Argentina? Do you, first of all, do you speak uh, Spanish? Yeah, yeah, I speak Spanish. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's why I'm in a plane. The play is in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I speak Spanish. I speak French. I, 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 and I have TV here, so I watch the news, the local news. And of course, I, I read the New York Times, you know, The Guardian, whatever. I'm, I'm Le Monde. And, and yes, my son is saying he also speaks Spanish. <laughs> That's such a cool family. So, no, I have an Argentinian passport too. Oh. So I'm kind of, I'm a mix. I'm a nomad. I have an accent in all languages, but I, <laughs> I I'm, I'm, I'm able to blend in sort of, you know? That's so. so cool. You have such an interesting life. I like appreciate you and your artistry and the fact that you took, you know, something language that is a really hard thing for a lot of people to understand and to to learn but you had it at such a young age with your mother being able to speak to you in spanish my husband's the same way his mom is austrian his dad is italian so he speaks german uh italian english spanish and for me i'm just like like i'm still trying to learn italian now and it's very difficult (laughs) just use your hand there you go With the quarantine in um, in Argentina, what are your thoughts on COVID now and the spread? I try not to think too much in the future because it's very difficult to predict what's going to happen. Um, it seems to me that um, you know the situa- the current situation is is going to we're not going to live in a normal way for a while. That's what I think. I think that we are going to be forced until they find actually a vaccine or uh, prophylactic measures. We're going to be forced to, you know, change our ways of living. Obviously, we cannot stay in the situation we're in right now, which is this super strict. But I think that once the wave, the peak goes away, I, there might be they're, they're thinking here, at least, of, you know, changing the rules of quarantine, letting people work who are not at, at risk, um, you know, I don't know. I think the social distancing is going to be something that's going to be part of our lives in a way or another for a while. And uh, yeah, right now I'm staying here because, first of all, I have a contract until end of June. And, and you know, it, I, I think that probably the streaming situation hopefully is going to happen in one way or another because it doesn't involve a uh, public. Uh, and uh, and um, in terms of my um, the rest of the world, I have no idea. <laughs> I think we're all living in, in this kind of, you know, this is what's amazing. I mean, we don't know. I mean, in a way, that's terrifying. But on the other hand, maybe it's an opportunity to change a lot of things. You know, I I, I, I see it maybe as an opportunity I, of, uh, you know, thinking about our lives and how we're living and how, you know, we should change certain things. What are the things that we value, really, you know, being like that separated? I think that we can um, value relationships and real relationships. I don't know if Rafael, are you okay with this or do you want to say something? No? <laughs> okay. Um, and honestly, I, for me, for example, I think we have to think much more about nature and the environment, frankly. I think that this is really a wake up call. I mean, we're humans, we're part of this big chain. We're not that strong in the end, you know, a little virus can, I mean, it's, it's a microscopic thing that that basically is putting us on our on our knees we are coming together as a species we are all homo sapiens now you know it doesn't matter what color what gender what political leaning whatever it's really an opportunity to see what brings us together we are all homo sapiens i mean we have we're a species we have to fight something together you know and that's something quite beautiful it's when did this happen last i mean seriously i i don't know so maybe this is uh, something that could be good there's two possibility. Uh, I think either if there's going to be uh, more a community and more awareness of our, our commonality or the opposite. Or people are going to become more and more um, paranoid, more and more selfish. 
I'm a very optimistic person. Um, I'm hoping that people are taking this prescribed break from reality to really think about things like you say, um, you know, but I think that the longevity of that and how long it takes for people to completely forget it. Like, I, I hope that people truly take this inside of themselves and really start to question the way they treat others, the way they see themselves at, like within the structure of the world so that that way, whenever the change does happen, because it's going to, and like, there's going to be a giant wave of goodwill. I just hope that that wave keeps coming. When this first started, the quarantine, I was, uh, you know, going up and down the stairs uh, of the building to, to get a bit of exercise. And I went up two stories and I saw on one of the doors a sign, which was terrible. It was like, sort of xenophobic. It was like, foreigners, you need to, do not enter. It was in Spanish, no? Uh, foreigners don't enter uh, or stop. Uh, you also have to do quarantine. Otherwise, we will denounce you to the police or something like that. Wow. You know, I was like, I was shocked. I was like, what? In your building? This was in your building. In my building. In my building. And I was, I was really, I was furious, you know, and I, I, I actually s took a picture and sent it to many people and they were saying, well, you know, people now are paranoid and it's true. I mean, you know, I was like, I'm going to put this on social media and people says, no, you know, this is just an exception. But I know this is an issue. And like, I know there've been a lot of, you know, racism towards Asians. Uh, and, you know, and I felt concerned for myself to tell you the truth, to speak French in Argentina, to have a French accent is considered kind of cool, you know, <laughs> but now it's not. Now it's not. I was actually afraid of speaking you know at some point my parent my father called me from switzerland and we speak french and i said you know i can't speak right now like i was in the supermarket i was like i'm not feeling comfortable speaking french to you because i feel that people are going to be hostile you know it's terrible i mean i, I mean I, I just and i do feel that i feel like and i, I don't want to say i mean obviously most people are not but some are and I know it's happened everywhere. I mean, I have some, you know, Asian friends who are feeling the same thing in Europe. I mean, you know, it's just like there's a kind of feeling of fear of the other. So that's that's the other. That's the real. And I and, and I experience it, too, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, as as a as being a foreigner. I think that xenophobia and, you know, the way that people are blaming a specific grouping of people for this, um, you know, I think that this was a governmental breakdown. This was a communication breakdown between governments. I mean, the fact that a government is even allowed to have a, a pandemic happen without letting other people know is kind of, to me, like Chernobyl. That should be something that Every single government is required by law to let other people know so that they can take measures um, yeah. so that it doesn't get to this point. But, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. We've already had situations like this in history, and we're proving again that we just don't listen. Um, uh, what What is one good thing that you've noticed during this time or triumph? Time is the most precious thing we have. You know, we and, and we live in a society that 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 basically we have no time to do anything all the, you know we're constantly busy 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 so suddenly now we're forced to have time and we're forced to to get bored supposedly I, I i don't think boredom is a bad thing i think it forces you to face things that you don't want to face otherwise you know because you don't want to <laughs> so you kind of escape during other things so this forced um time that we have is is at least for me, I think is is forcing me to to face certain things, to to reevaluate certain things, and also to be in touch with people that uh, you know I love. That basically I didn't take the time, or they didn't take the time to to talk. You know, I mean, I'm talking about my family, of course, and very good friends. Now suddenly we have time to talk, and we talk a lot every day, even if it's like this. It's still some form of communication we talk about you know deep things you know we're not talking about the weather or what did you do today because what did you do is not interesting <laughs> <That's so true. laughs> we all do the same thing but i think we talk about real issues you know like more profound philosophical questions that otherwise people don't take the time to necessarily talk about you know so i think that's a positive part hopefully it'll continue after that <laughs> 
didn't even think about that. Like the actual uh, thought that if you ask somebody what they did today, it's probably like, I watched seven TV shows. I took a shower like that. And they're like, well, I watched six TV shows and took a shower. So, um, uh, and is there anything specific that you would like to say in one of the many languages that you speak Spanish, French, you know, English? Well, we'll get to the English second, but, uh, with one of your native tongues, uh, to the world or also Argentina, just, kind of telling them what you think about what we're currently going through. Je voudrais dire euh, à toutes les personnes qui parlent français dans le monde que nous sommes tous dans cette situation et quelque part nous sommes réunis, nous sommes seuls mais nous sommes ensemble et ça vous le savez déjà. Mais je pense que c'est une opportunité pour nous de de nous rendre compte que nous sommes euh, tous des homo sapiens. <rire> voilà. Je le dis en français mais on pourrait le dire en C'est dommage qu'il n'y ait pas une langue universelle pour pour euh, pour nous réunir, mais enfin, on fait ce qu'on peut. <rire> C'est vrai, je comprends beaucoup, uh, je, je comprends un peu le français, mais, uh, uh, well, now it's all Italian. Every time I try to think in French, it goes... En italien. Parliamo italien. Ah, ok, <rire> si, grazie. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, so you're speaking a lot about uh, Homo sapiens. There's actually a book that I recently started reading called Sapiens. Have you read this book? Yes, of course, I read it, of course. Uh, yes, of course, I read it, yes. Such yes. a great, great piece of work. I'm yes, like, yes. it's everything that you're saying. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember when we t when he was talking about this. Um, yeah. So is there anything that you could say in English uh, to the world, just, you know, giving them a little bit of hope or your perspective? My hope is that the situation we're in will bring us together, is bringing us together as a species. And I think it's important for us to realize that we are a species, we are one. And in front of, of a crisis like this, it doesn't matter whether you have a lot of money, you have no money, whether you're, you know, straight, gay, white, black, whatever, uh, woman. I, I think it's wonderful in a way to feel that we are one. And I hope that after this, we'll be able to to be more aware of, of the fewer differences that we have, rather than always trying to show the differences between us, whether it's gender difference or whatever, to, to see that we are actually very similar, all of us, you know. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, we will be able to, to live more in harmony. I mean, I'm an idealist, but I think that this is the moment to think about that and, and not to think about differences and discrimination. Also, I think that whatever happens in one country, it may be that the United States uh, or Europe is able to control this virus. But if we cannot control this in Africa, in Latin America and other countries, it doesn't matter whether you control it in one country. Now we have to work all together on this, you know, and help each other. So this is for me an opportunity, again, to bring us together and, and, and you know, forget about this kind of nationalistic and, and identity kind of uh, leaning politics, you know, I really think it's it's a moment to reevaluate this. So let's do it together. We are running out of time, Annie. I cannot thank you enough for getting on with me. I'm so glad that Mercedes put us together. Uh, you know, you're kind of far away from where you consider home right now. And so I want you to know if you want to just call me on Skype at any point in time to chat. I know you're busy with your friends and family, uh, but I am available. So definitely don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but I will let you get back to your day and Raphael's day. Um, thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Ciao.